Though they keep countless viewers entertained with the gift of gab, there are many talk show hosts who have skeletons in their closets. Who is the worst among them? Keep watching to find out. James Corden is adept at playing the role of the affable Brit out of water, and his tenure on The Late Late Show has delighted audiences with iconic segments like carpool karaoke. After all, who can forget former First Lady Michelle Obama bopping with Missy Elliott? But beneath the cheeky veneer, revelations regarding Corden's supposed arrogance have left some fans astounded. Rumors of his attitude reached the point where fans even called him out during a 2019 Reddit AMA. With several several users roasting him for his many alleged indiscretions. That same year, a late-night writer took to Twitter to accuse Corden of attempting to undermine union writers by recommending lower pay. Corden denied this, however, claiming he was advocating for younger talent. Regardless, his more controversial behavior had been on full display years before. When accepting the Audience Award for Gavin and Stacey at the 2008 BAFTAs, Corden came across as wholly ungracious, grumbling, just out of interest, how can the best comedy performance and program of the year not be eligible for best sitcom? And at the 2010 Glamour Awards, Sir Patrick Stewart castigated Corden for his seemingly rude manner at the event, saying, don't stand at the back of the stage with your hands in your pockets, looking around as though you wished you were anywhere but here. As The Guardian wrote in 2008, Corden says he had a confidence problem, too much of it. With his old-school brand of stand-up comedy, Jay Leno regularly pulled in record viewing figures in the 90s. Legend has it, however, that the longtime late-night host remained at the top via unscrupulous means. When his time on The Tonight Show ended in 2009, he moved on to his eponymous primetime series, which resulted in a long feud with successor Conan O'Brien. The latter was seemingly furious when NBC offered Leno his old 11.30 p.m. time slot amid dwindling ratings, while O'Brien was given an ultimatum of either taking the unsociable midnight slot or getting axed, as reported by TMZ. This meant that O'Brien was effectively robbed of the dream job he'd been promised by the network for years, one for which he had moved his family and his entire production company from New York to California. As he joked during one episode of The Tonight Show, I just want to say to the kids out there watching, you can do anything you want in life. Yeah. Yeah, unless Jay Leno wants to do it too. <laughs> While Leno later expressed zero regrets on Watch What Happens Live, communications professor Jeffrey McCall told the Los Angeles Times that the ensuing controversy resulted in Leno's reputation getting warped in public. From that of a fun-loving comedian to a guy who ends up looking like he has a more dark, selfish side, Rosie O'Donnell helped lead the charge against Leno, calling him, quote, the bully on the playground who doesn't want to let go. And fellow late-night hosts David Letterman and Jimmy Kimmel piled on routinely crushing Leno in their monologues, and sometimes to his face. Ever order anything off the TV? <laughs> like NBC ordered your show off the TV? Yeah, yeah, no, no. no. Ultimately, Team Coco had the last laugh, as Conan became a cause celeb and got a new show that lasted more than a decade, while Leno disappeared into his garage and faded into obscurity. As former host of The Late Show, David Letterman was once synonymous with the talk show circuit, an iconic figure in late-night entertainment. However, the post-Me Too era has led to his reputation being sullied by numerous unsavory revelations. In 2019, the extent of his alleged abuse of power, particularly in his admitted interactions with women, was eye-opening. According to the New York Daily News, Letterman allegedly bullied and yelled at both his colleagues and guests. Executive producer Rob Burnett alleged that he was perpetually moody, and writer Eric Stengel claimed that he behaved, quote, like a pervy old man at times. In fact, he was blackmailed for having a sexual relationship with one of his employees, something he revealed himself on the air in 2009. The creepy stuff was that I have uh, had sex with women who work for me on this show. In a 2019 Vanity Fair interview, Letterman also apologized to former writer Nell Scavell for creating an unwelcome workplace environment for women, saying, I'm sorry I was that way. I felt horrible because who wants to be the guy that makes people unhappy to work where they're working? I don't want to be that guy. I'm not that guy now. I was that guy then. So are these apologies enough? That's for each individual to decide for themselves. 
There's seemingly no end to Wendy Williams' controversial shenanigans on her eponymous show, as the host is known to frequently make light of highly sensitive subjects. For instance, when a woman accused Drake of rape in 2018, Williams joked about the accuser's body shape rather than address the serious allegations at hand. Three years later, she went viral for going on what BuzzFeed called a bizarre rant about TikTok star Swavy, noting that he had more social media followers than her only to nonchalantly drop the bombshell that he was murdered at the age of 19. The mystifying segment resulted in major backlash. Many viewers accused her of trivializing his tragic death. In addition to being called out for alleged homophobia and ableism, Williams has also been condemned for appearing rude to her guests and for ridiculing people's appearances. For instance, she had to apologize after mocking Oscar winner Joaquin Phoenix for being born with a cleft lip. She doesn't seem to actually be that apologetic for anything, though. Telling TV Line, people have always been looking to pick and poke. And all of a sudden, social media came up and people, they get together and they want to think what they think. All I am is Wendy. That's it. Williams has been absent from her show, battling the effects of Graves' disease since the fall of 2020. 21. So here's hoping she has a full recovery soon. Throughout the years, Bill Maher has perhaps become less known for comedy and better known for his somewhat fearless willingness to embrace opinions that are neither popular nor politically correct. Jacobin Mag said that the controversial talk show host is bound together by a distinctly metropolitan smugness that revels in causing offense then greets the inevitable blowback with caustic superiority. For instance, Maher's first show, the aptly titled Politically Incorrect, was canceled by ABC due to comments he made in the weeks following 9-11. As reported by the New York Times, he went against the consensus of the time by claiming that Americans, as opposed to the terrorists who hijacked the planes, were quote, cowardly. The show got canceled. Marr continued with this approach on HBO's Real Time, often being accused of expressing anti-Muslim sentiments. Famously, he was called out by Ben Affleck for jokingly dismissing Islamophobia in 2014 with the actor branding his views as, quote, gross and racist. Amid allegations of racism, sexism, homophobia, and so on, Marr has perhaps unsurprisingly joined a long line of middle-aged comedians taking aim at so-called wokeness and cancel culture. 2021, for example, saw Marr defend Dave Chappelle's transphobic jokes. He also got in hot water in 2022 for dismissive comments about the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought widespread condemnation. I think he's forgetting that people are still at risk who cannot get vaccinated. We all love those cute little skits on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, particularly the comedian's scaring celeb stunts. But who knew that beneath her funny pranks and be kind to one another brand was an allegedly nightmarish reality behind the scenes? When Kate McKinnon parodied DeGeneres on Saturday Night Live, the running gag was that the host could do pretty much anything and brush it off with the mantra, I'm Ellen. Whether this was a prophecy or not, one thing's for certain, DeGeneres sure annoyed tons of her employees. As reported by BuzzFeed, numerous people levied troubling accusations toward DeGeneres and show execs in 2020, including claims of racist microaggressions, belittling staff, and contributing to a toxic work environment. One employee said, That be kind bullshit only happens when the cameras are on. It's all for show. The allegations led to an investigation and swift backlash against DeGeneres, prompting a number of her uncomfortable interviews with celebs to resurface. The Ellen DeGeneres show announced it would end its 19-season run in 2022. But those aren't the only troubling claims against the titular host. According to the Daily Mail, a waitress alleged that DeGeneres once tried to get her fired because her nail polish was chipped saying, she really went out of her way to try to hurt someone who is beneath her and serving her. Forbes argued that people overlooked DeGeneres' alleged mean girl behavior due to her typical, quote, passive-aggressive demeanor while on air. As host of Piers Morgan Live and Good Morning Britain, Piers Morgan seemingly made a career out of being disliked by much of the public and most of his peers. In a 2014 column for The Times, fellow TV host Jeremy Clarkson lambasted Morgan for his stupid Twitter boasts about his huge fame and lavish lifestyle. He went on to add that his CNN show failed because the viewers hated him. Everyone hates him. By March 2021, Morgan's controversial remarks about Meghan Markle 
Apple resulted in tens of thousands of complaints, leading him to literally walk off the ITV morning show set and resign. The Guardian branded him, quote, the man who never knew when to stop. Plus, away from the camera, Morgan has been embroiled in some other allegedly shameful improprieties, and we're not talking about his propensity for the more than occasional celebrity Twitter feud. While Morgan has long denied his involvement, the former editor of the Daily Mirror found himself at the center of the tabloid's celebrity phone hacking scandal in the late 2000s. Fellow TV presenter Jeremy Paxman even alleged to the Levison Inquiry that Morgan once explained to him in explicit detail how to hack a phone, as reported by The Guardian. While Lord Justice Levison stated the allegation didn't prove Morgan's involvement, he did add, What it does, however, clearly prove is that he was aware that it was taking place in the press as a whole, and that he was sufficiently unembarrassed by what was criminal behavior that he was prepared to joke about it. An understated and slickly professional host, Charlie Rose was renowned for his expertly researched interviews on both his titular show and CBS This Morning. One got the sense that Rose was genuinely invested in his guests who were the focus of his interviews, as opposed to himself. While not a huge personality in the vein of, say, Jay Leno, Rose's contribution to the talk show medium is undeniable, as he remained the antithesis of a larger-than-life TV host. This reputation made it all the more surprising how apparently audacious Rose was in his alleged entitlement towards women's bodies. As reported by The Washington Post in 2017, eight female employees of The Charlie Rose Show accused him of sexual misconduct. More accusations followed. The former employees alleged, among other things, that Rose frequently exposed himself to women, made, quote, lewd phone calls, gave unwanted shoulder rubs, and engaged in groping. Insider also reported that Rose's one-time makeup artist was suing him. The lawsuit alleged, far from being an advocate for their careers, Mr. Rose treated them as sexual targets, using his power and influence to serve his personal desires. Responding to the Washington Post's expose, Rose admitted to some of the accusations and apologized for his behavior, though he argued that a number of the claims were inaccurate. Subsequently, when TMZ asked Rose to comment on his wrongdoings, he literally slammed the door on them, saying, quote, it's not wrongdoings. The notion of The Jeremy Kyle Show might seem unfathomable in the current climate. Often compared with the likes of The Jerry Springer Show, Jeremy Kyle appeared to take the moral high ground on his tabloid-esque series in the UK. The Guardian alleged that he did this by attacking the most economically deprived and marginalized people in society, quote, as if decency and compassion are middle-class affectations. Subsequently, The Independent suggested that Kyle contributed heavily to the demonization of the poor, writing, Kyle exploited people's genuine problems, which were frequently mental health-related, for entertainment, using faux concern and cod psychology to give a paper-thin veil of respectability to the nastiness. Kyle, for his part, was vicious, a pugnacious troll with a god complex. Indeed, Kyle's frequent targets included the unemployed, young single mothers, and those with substance abuse issues, as his show appeared to quench viewers' thirst for public shame and ridicule. In a new magazine column, singer Carrie Katona wrote that Kyle's show was a vehicle to mock lower-class people with no teeth, whose mental health problems aren't always taken seriously. While defenders of the show have noted that the host attempted to resolve whatever issues the guests had, it was usually done in exchange for being verbally lambasted at great length. This controversial technique tragically resulted in the death of a guest by suicide shortly after filming an episode, effectively bringing the longtime series to an end in 2019. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call or chat online with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255 or text HOME to the Crisis Text Line 741741.